Okay, it's Jeff Challen again. In this screencast, we're going to look uh, quickly at how to get things set up so that you can submit assignments using Test 161. So uh, the first thing I want to point out here is that um, the Test 161 is designed so that you get a very accurate idea of how you're going to do on an assignment locally. So you should not uh, repeatedly uh, be submitting assignments for remote grading. Uh, you know, you should be iterating locally using Test 161 locally to see how you're going to do. And then when you're happy with the score, submit to the, the submission system and see how you do there. Um, that's pretty important to make sure that the load is sort of distributed among all your machines rather than concentrated on our backend server. Um, you know, when assignments are, uh, deadlines are approaching, you may see there be backups in terms of the grading. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but really, again, you know, you're supposed to be able to um, do as much of this locally as possible. The other thing that you'll notice is that when you submit things uh, uh, for backend testing, the output is actually different because uh, we're configuring your kernel differently. A lot of the messages that you normally see during testing are disabled. Uh, that allows the test to run faster. But that's also because this is, you know, remote testing is not designed to produce diagnostic output. Um, finally, if you're missing tests that are required to evaluate your kernel, uh, that's be and we didn't if we didn't give you tests, it's because we want you to write them as part of the assignment. Um, so please do that rather than, you know, repeatedly submitting uh, your assignments for grading. Okay, so there's a couple things you need to do to get ready to submit. Um, you need to configure Test 161 locally um, so that it knows who you are, and you need to configure the back end so the back end knows how to get a copy of your repository. So let's talk about how to do the second thing first. Um, so uh, part of this is now uh, going to be done through the Test 161 backend. So here's our Test 161 server. It's test161.opsclass.org. There's a link now from the main opsclass.page that'll take you over to the Test 161 uh, page as well. Um, so here I am. This is kind of the, the, the view that you'll see. We're still working out some bugs here with how some of the things look. Uh, so that, that'll change over time. But up here, there's a login button. Uh, we're going to use the same credentials that I use for the GitLab instance and for Discourse, um, and that's going to log me in. Okay, so now I'm logged in. What I see here is is pretty much an out of date <laughs> and not perfectly formatted version of the instructions uh, that we have up on the, the main ops class page, which is what I would use for now. Um, now, right here is something I need to do right uh, when I get started. So this is a profile. Now this has two things. The submit token is something that I'm going to use in my test161.com file to tell the test server who I am and, and make sure that this is done securely. So your test161, uh, this, this submit token is secret. Please don't share it with other people other than your partner. Your partner will need to have this in order to submit on your behalf, but you should not give it to anybody else. If you're worried that it's been compromised, you can always regenerate it using this uh, button right here. Um, it's going to ask you, once you regenerate a token, the old token is not good anymore, so please only regenerate a token if you need to. You'll have to change your configuration file and notify your partner, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, Probably uh, one of the trickier parts of, of getting this to work is that the backend needs access to your Git repository. You are going to submit, um, essentially submit a Git uh, commit ID, which is what identifies the code that you want us to test. Um, the Test 161 site is going to be strict about not testing public Git repositories. Remember, the repository that you use for the code in this class has to be private. If we can detect that it's public, we will not test it. If you're in a course that's using this, that may be grounds for veiling the class. Uh, you are responsible for making sure that that repository is private. Again, if we can detect that it's public, um, uh, the staff will be notified and, and that may be grounds for failing the course. So please make sure that your repository is secure. Um, but we still need to be able to access your repository during testing. So how are we going to do that? Um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to allow you to generate your own public key. Um, the private key is going to be stored on our server, and this public key is something that you'll use to configure a repository to allow us to access it. I'll show you how to do that using GitLab. There's a process using GitHub that I'll walk you through a little bit too that's pretty similar. Other uh, Git repositories probably have ways of doing this as well, but I'm going to show you how to do it on GitLab and then on, Git, on GitHub. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to generate a public key. You see that I haven't generated one yet. Hit this button, uh, type in my email address, uh, hit regenerate. Uh, and boom. Okay, so now here is the public key that matches the private key that Test161 is going to try to use to clone my repository. Now it's important that uh, this is a per user, uh, done on a per user basis. So if your partner creates this, um, they and if they're submitting, they will also need their own key 
and they, you will need to configure the repository to use these both of these keys. Okay, so now I have a unique key. Now let's imagine that I'm using uh, our local GitLab instance. This is mine. Obviously, there's some things in here that you guys might find interesting, but we're not going to poke around too much. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is configure it so that it can clone the uh, base sources. This is a uh, kind of a clone of the base sources that we maintain on GitHub for you guys to use. This is, has some sort of private changes and other things. Okay, so on GitLab, the way you do this is you go navigate to the repository that you want to use. And what we're going to do is we're going to add what's called a deploy key. A deploy key is not associated with my account. It's associated with the repository. And it allows me to provide Test 161 the ability, or the ability to clone this repository, but not push to it. And that's pretty important. So please do not add this key to your user profile on GitHub, to your user profile on our GitLab instance. You don't want to give this key all that power. All you want to do is give this key the ability to clone, the ability to clone this one single repository. So how I do that on GitLab is, again, I go to the repository, here's our base sources, I click Settings, and here is this thing over here called Deploy Keys. I'm going to click on Deploy Keys. Uh, you can see that there's already some deploy keys that we're using uh, to test other things. I'm going to hit New Deploy Key, um, call this test161.opsclass.org, or whatever you want to call it. Name is really kind of relevant. Um, I paste in the key that was just generated and hit Create. Um, so now you can see that there's a deploy key enabled for this project. And what that means is that Test161, the back end, can now clone my Git repository. It can't push to it, but it can pull from it, and that's what I need in order to submit. Okay, now let me kind of show you how to do that on GitHub. Just as an example, I won't actually do this, but let's go here and let's imagine. Now these repositories are public, so they would, they would be flagged by the Test161 server, so I'm not going to... Um, actually do this, but I'll kind of show you how to go through the process. Uh, GitHub has its own settings menu over here, and it also has deploy keys. Um, and I can add a deploy key here, pretty much the same process, um, give it a name, uh, paste the key value in. GitHub actually allows you to add write access, which I would, I would not do. Um, and then you're done. Um, the other thing that uh, we found out about GitHub was that GitHub actually uh, enforces the fact that all deploy keys have to be unique. So if you try to add the same deploy key to two different repositories, GitHub will not like that. Um, and so if, you know, the idea here is that this deploy key should be used only on the private GitHub repository where you store the OS161 sources that you want to submit. That's the only place you should use it. If you try to add it twice, if you give it to your partner and they try to add it to a different repository, it's not going to work. Okay. So, so now we're done. I mean, that's that's what we needed to do. I've got my um, uh, repository here on our private GitLab instance configured so that I can pull from it. Um, and then the last thing I need to do is adjust my uh, configuration so that I can submit. Um, and so if you remember in the beginning, um, we ran test 161 run and it uh, you know printed off a configuration file. This is I didn't have one. Uh, that I was using that. So let's do this again, where we recreate our test161.comp file. I'm going to put in, uh, just correct this quickly, um, path to my root and the test161. And now, now here, well, now we're going to use these values. Okay. So now the server is something that you can just leave alone. That's our test161 uh, backend server. The repository, I need to give it the an SSLH link to the repository. Um, sorry, the, 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 yeah, the git at link to the repository. Um, if I was using GitHub, that would be, um, you can get access to that. Oh, this is the wrong repo. You can get access to that by um, clicking here, um, and then you get the, you get a get at GitHub link. Uh, we're not going to use HTTPS links. We're only going to use the get at um, links or some something at the uh, clone over SSH links that allows us to use the key. And then I need to set up my users. So uh, I'm just going to do this on my behalf. I enter my own email address. And then here's where I need that token that I just generated right here. So I'm going to take my submit token. Um, paste that in here. If you have a partner, you need to put their 
email address. Most of you have partners, their email address, and their private token here. So contact your partner out of band to get their private token. Um, I don't have a partner. So I'm just going to put this in here like this. And this, this is done, okay? So now uh, I can go back to my root directory, uh, run, make sure that things are still working or not working in this case because I'm about to get to zero out of 50. Um, okay, so this is it. Now, you know, if you switch partners, that would be a great time to regenerate your, your submit token and make sure that your partner can't submit things on your behalf. Um, so now we've seen how to set things up to submit. And the next screencast will actually submit an assignment, see how it goes.